The Greater Cincinnati BPA's Pewterpole King of Bowling. Brought to you by Pewterpole Shanley, brewers of Cincinnati's celebrated beers. The best in the world is brewed right here. famous recipe makes the best tasting chicken in town. We bake fluffy scratch buttermilk biscuits glazed with melted butter. Taste our country fresh salads and hot vegetables. Right now you can get the 12 piece family feast with all the fixins for only $9.95. A complete wholesome meal for only $9.95. Famous recipes family feast. The great taste keeps you coming back. To set up the match, Don Scudder told me before we started that lanes 41 and 2 here at Brentwood Bowl are very, very similar, and he's going to be playing them identically, taking the ball from about the fourth board straight down the lane and then letting it roll. Oh, pulled that ball a little bit, and he got away with it. He'll All take right. that. Anytime, as you mentioned, Dave, anytime in any sport when you can make a mistake but still come away. Uh, with success, that spells a difference more times than not between the champions and the non-champions. That's exactly right. And, uh, the, the real good bowler will develop a sense, and it's not something you can work on or learn. It just kind of happens, and that is at the point of release, Tommy. If you're going to get the ball wide, you have a tendency to hit it harder. If you're going to pull the ball, you can dump the thumb, and it will go straight. That time, Don Scudder pulled the ball, dumped it, Perfect in the pocket. He leads by 10 pins. Looking for his third strike in a row, and he got it. Boy, he has come out of the gate in a hurry. He you is pumped. He's ready to win. He, he did issue the challenge. You want to see some body English? You bet. Here it comes. The one, the one three pocket is annihilated. Don Scudder, look at the face. <laughs> he wanted it. No kidding. Jim Beckler is got all he can handle here, but he is not going to run away. Jim has a little boy, 17 months old. He's married. He's averaging anywhere from 213 to 222, and he has four 300 games. Not too bad at all. And he started bowling his tw at 20, as we said a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Whereas Don started bowling when he was seven. He's from the school, the schooled area of bowling. Started young, learned a lot, and deadly. Well, both players are really cranking it up right now. After a spare in the first frame, Beckler has answered with three consecutive strikes. Scudder, he ain't missed yet. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. There, the score sheet tells the tale. Don Scudder, perfect through three frames. Jim Beckler in the hole, but losing a hit in the first frame, ten pins behind. If Don Scudder does not strike here, he will be one pin down. So needless to say, a crucial frame right here for Don Scudder. He's got to keep the momentum going, and it looks good. There they go, ten more in the pit. Absolutely perfect. Where's those car keys? Like Ford. Today, Tom Schiller has brought us a Ford Escort GT two-door hatchback, and it is jazzy. <laughs> for that Don sporty look. Absolutely. They're really jazzing up that Escort. That gives you a shot of what uh, what kind of equipment Mr. Scudder's throwing today. That's a black u -dot made by the Columbia Corporation, and it is designed to hook and hit, and it is hooking and hitting for every dollar he <laughs> paid for it right now. Can't do a whole lot better than what Mr. Scudder has done so far. Four strikes in a row, the first four frames. Match number one, looking for five. We jinxed him. What did we call that last year? The new rat factor, I think <laughs> oh, it was. Oh, don't start it. again. <laughs> no, save me, please. That time he just did not hit the ball quite as firmly. There you see it, leaving a weak seven pin. Uh, Don kind of jumped in front of our camera there, or else we'd have shown you why he left that. Uh, the five pin absorbed very, very little contact with the ball. It went in front of the seven. Very weak shot for Don Scudder, but it's an easy spare. Should bring it back, no problem. 
Couldn't have been said any better. We talked about how many times Scudder's been on. How many times through the years, Jennifer? Boy, too many that I can even... I know he's been the king 13 times. Last year he acquired his 13th title. He's just... He's always been there. He's just a great competitor, and he's always up near the top. You know, and like you said, the fact that he has qualified 15 times and been king 13, that in itself is a feat. Yeah, he's, he's good under that pressure. The camera doesn't get to him. He likes pressure. People throw a couple strikes at him. He's right there ready. Jim Beckler's footwork. Well schooled. Heel toe, heel toe. Upper body, a little less uh, conservative, a little less uh, conventional. His footwork, absolutely perfect. That's what you want to do. Heel toe, nice and slow. And that's the way you want the result. Boy, after the first string, Beckler, five consecutive strikes. We've got a match, Dave. Absolutely fantastic. Tommy, a match? You betcha. Score sheet shows Don Scudder one pin behind. However, his opponent with a double working actually turns that to a 21-pin deficit. Unless Don Scudder can strike here, knocks it back to 11. It really is amazing. I mean, for the folks at home, they think, how can this guy be losing five strikes in a row? And then he comes up with a spare. And mm. we, we show you all the great shots. Let's show you one where he misses. On the, on the replay, let's watch. He's going to dump this thumb a little early, not quite catch the ball. There you see it going right over his mark. But look at him. No roll. The ball's going to jump to the right, right here. There you see it. Not even touching the five pin. That's the head pin going to the wall, taking out the seven, leaving the two, four, five, eight, commonly known as the bucket. Difficult spare. There's a couple of different ways to chop this thing, Tommy, but um, again, Don Scudder's probably shot a couple thousand of these <laughs> in his life. And that's and how you make it. That's exactly right. The big problem was the count. On a spare, you throw a six count, you lose pins. Crucial frame, six frame for Don Scudder. He did not take advantage of uh, the opportunity. He better start striking here because Jim Beckler doesn't look like he's going to miss. No kidding. You know, you talked about Jim Beckler a little bit uh, a moment ago, Jennifer, and he's only been bowling, started bowling when he was 20 years old, but he has got uh, quite a few impressive feats in his short time. Boy, I, I can't hardly believe this, but he has three 800 series. That, to me, is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. That was phenomenal. As was that shot. Don Scudder faced with... <clears throat> Only four more frames to get back into this match, and he knows what he has to do. You see Bill Pollard there talking to him a little bit. Just we ever heard this line? We ever heard the What's line, that? he's running out of paper? Running out of paper, that's right. I'm picking up on all your lanes. <laughs> he's going to be running out of paper soon if this guy keeps on nailing him. Jim Beckler, six strikes out of seven frames, has the match. Uh, in control and under any other circumstances I might say it's well under control but against Don Scudder it's never over till it's over tough we've seen that in the past we certainly have Jim Bowles out of Kingpen lanes that's my part of the woods mm. now what happened there well, the ball broke off a little sharper on the back end than he's normally wants to. Like we can see it here on the replay, Tommy. Watch his reaction. But what you're going to see is the six pin, second one from the right-hand side. Just absolute pressure shot, a little high, not carrying through. That's the opportunity Don Scudder needed. Now, the only way he can come back to win this match yeah, with Jim Beckler just plugging the hole each and every shot is to strike here in the eighth and ninth frame and put the put the fear of God into him here going into the final couple of mile poles. Okay. I don't think anything ever really gets to Don Scudder, do you, Dave? No. He just struck. Look at that. That's evident right there. He stepped absolutely right up there and did what you said he had to do. Oh, Tom. Tommy, it's an absolutely perfect opportunity to, to watch a true pro. There you see the score. Don Scudder, double working, 7th and 8th, 145. That makes him 24 pins down. Uh, with a double, though, cuts it to 14. He's back in the match. He doesn't want to see that paper run out. That doesn't happen too often. See the look of concentration. He knows what he has to do. Done it many times before. Don Staring Scudder. at that mark. No kidding. And he looks on it. And he is.
I told you, I told you, you cannot count this man out ever. Let's watch this replay. Crucial shot, ninth frame. He needs 10 in a pit. What's he going to do? He splits his mark. Sixth one. He changed it a little bit. Perfect. One, three. Did he like it? Oh, that's you it. You betcha. Every pin doing its job. All right. And Beckler. A little extra emotion right there yeah. from Big Jim. He knew he needed that one. You betcha. That's uh, that's what you're going to have. Ninth frame, both players. What a match play <clears throat> game we have here on our hands. Both players knowing that they have to build going into the 10th frame. We have a, <clears throat> a four-pin match. Four pins is all that separates these two good ones. Mm, got a little help. Oh, he's going to be happy about that one. That did he, one did he make him. a mistake? Oh, well, not really. The other shots, he kind of rolled out and brought it back in. That one, he stuffed it, tripping out the six pin a little late. And uh, this puts him in it now. Here's the situation, Tom. If he gets this next strike, no matter what Don Scudder can do, the game is over. Looking Big for shot. The strike. And the win. There it is. Well, that was impressive. Jim really bowled a great game there against one of the greats, Don Scudder. Put the pressure on him and actually locked him out before he got up in the 10th frame. The only thing that can possibly happen here if Jim Beckler were to throw the big five and Don strike out, Don could still win by a stick. The big four, Don could strike out the tie. Anything more than a six count, Jim Beckler wins. That's it. Well, you called that. That's three more than six. That's nine. And a well-deserved round of applause for Jim Beckler. He was with us in week one. And he has come back here in week three and looked awfully impressive. What was his final tally there? 268. Just an incredible game to open the show with. And uh, considering uh, every ball was either in or just around the pocket. Done. We've got a few proprietors with us here today. We've got uh, Fran Ruggieri's from the Golden Triangle. Wes Seymour and Cole Wendell. Done. And we also have uh, Rick Provisor, as I said in the opening, who is uh, the proprietor here at Brentwood. Mike McDonald from Stumps, and uh, he brings his sons every week, and they help us pass out the tickets. Uh, Jason and Sean McDonald. And Gotta also, talk to them. We've never gotten a ticket back that's here. That's right. What's the problem? <laughs> and also Carol and Irv Winky from Western Bull. Don Scudder can strike out for 265, but to no avail. He will still lose, but what an incredible showing. Odds against him, but he still keeps plugging away. He's got a lot of pride, this man. No kidding. Don averages between 209 and a 217. Has bowled a 300, and uh, he bowls pretty often. Yeah, three times a week, uh, all over, and that's probably not even counting the tournaments that he bowls over the weekends. Yeah. That'll do it, and a very impressive win for Jim Beckler. Coming up in just a second, our 14K Golden Ball Contest. Stick around. New part of our show this year, the 14K Golden Ball Contest, and Kathy Broxman, if you'd be so kind as to once again. Are you after Vanna White's job, by the way? Yes. You are. Well, if you could draw our contestants, and I'll tell the folks at home how it works. Kathy's going to be drawing a home contestant and a studio player. Now, the studio player will get a chance to come down here and roll for $200 this week. It's a $100 progressive jackpot. No one won last week, so 200 bucks in the pot. If the bowler does roll a strike, they will split the $100, a home player and bowler, and the bowler will get to keep the gold ball. And this week, it is sponsored by Carl's Paddock Bowl. If there's not a strike, the contestants will get a bicentennial T-shirt from Huda Pole and one line for each pin knocked down. Nine pins knocked down, nine free games at the BPA house of their choice. Kathy, first of all, who is our uh, home contestant today? We have a John A. Burton from Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, John, and our studio player is... I'm going to dip in there. <laughs> we have a Don Wilkemeyer. Don Wilkemeyer, you around? All righty, come on in. Let's hear a round of applause for her, folks. <laughs> Quick question for you. Yeah. What would you do if you get to split this 200 bucks? What are you going to do with that money? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> find a way to spend it? Yeah, I'll find a way. All Let right. me tell you. Have at it. Go ahead. Good luck. Looking 
for the strike. Looking good. Oh, all right. Well, hang on a second here. Congratulations. Thank you. All righty. And Kathy, we're going to be doing it again next week, right? Right. It'll be up to $300 next week. Not too bad. That's right. If you would like to get involved at home, here's all you have to do. Send your name and address to the BPA Golden Ball Contest, 1821 Summit Road, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45237. Thank you, Tommy. Well, it's jackpot building. Next week be worth three bills, and maybe Thomas can give it away next week, but Brentwood Bowl is where we're at this week, and the action, incredible. Starting off 250 to 260, Jim Becker <laughs> winning the first game. We'll start this game number two on the left lane. Uh, that was exciting. <laughs> he just made it back. No Tommy. kidding. 300 bucks next week. Beckler, uh, just like last game. That's right. Starting uh, starting with a nine-pin count, going a little high, but uh, sure didn't bother him or slow him down too much last game, finishing with 268. And he will pick up the spare. So Beckler starts out, as I mentioned, just like the last game, and I'm sure he would like to chalk up another 268. Well, it may not be enough. You never know against Cisco. He's happy, though. I'll tell you what, even if you lose with 260, you can hold your head up high for a long time. Bill Pollard. We had a Bill on last week with a lot of experience throwing from the left-hand side. Bill Heflin. This is Bill Pollard. Again, been on the show too many times to mention. He well, comes from a, a hellaciously strong bowling family. i tell you what, if it's one family you never want to challenge to a match game, it's his family. I know I've had my share of run-ins with Regina, boy. She's tough. Well, family's tough as a $2 steak. Matter of fact, recently, every one of the Pollards has acquired a 300 game. How about that? Three well, boys, that one girl, something. the mom, or not the mother, but the father does. Five of them in that family. Four of them, rather. Mm. That's right. But And mom, I'll tell you what, to put up with this family, you deserve a, an award ring. So doggone it, hit one of them up. they got a lot of jewelry laying around the house. You ought to have one of them. Tough as a $2 steak. Yeah. You had a lot of those? Uh, unfortunately, that's it. Look at this. Oh, down Look it goes. This. <laughs> Look at the smile on his face. He'll take it. He better be happy with that. So let's watch it on the replay. We, <laughs> we're going to see a completely Aaron shot going straight through the head pin, but it's going to break it up. Not only break it up, but carry it. Uh, so that's a head pin going straight back. That's a two pin to the wall. And that's the five pin taking out the six and the ten. Jim Beckler's anxious. He jumped up there and just hey, give me the not wasting any time. No way. Well, when you got the hot hand like he does, don't want to let it cool. Heck, off. no. Jennifer knows all about that. Absolutely. And once again, comes back to pick up the spare. He is spared in the first two frames. We got a pretty good crowd here today. What? Uh, let's see. Let's look around. Who we got back there, Jen? Oh, boy, we got lots of representatives from Hudipal again. Tony Plankton, we have Lee Ritter, who's a salesman uh, with Hudipal. Francie Patton. Remember, in the 10th frame, I said the big five, the church, as we call it. <laughs> this church, nobody wants to enter. <laughs> this, no. This is the 4, 7, 8, 6, 10, and that's how you try to make it. Look at this! Oh! Oh, incredible. What a way to... Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at this on the replay if we can. He is going to just miss bringing this back. A once-in-a-lifetime shot. Now watch, that's a four-pin. That's a four-pin. Oh, a little moonwalk across the lane. <laughs> it's going to tip into the six, and then it's going to take out the ten. He forgot one. Incredible shot, though. That was fantastic. No kidding. Dave, I watched you almost make that yesterday. You yeah. gave it a good shot there. Yeah, I used a little different technique, though. I threw it about Mach 3. <laughs> you know, I was out at the uh, Bowl for Kids' Sake at the Super Bowl yesterday in, uh, in Erlanger, and a funny story. A gentleman was telling me about Newrath and bowling. That's why I'm real anxious sometime to see him uh, on our uh, show this year. What story was this, Tom? It says Dave gets a little bent out of shape sometimes. Oh, no, no, no. This must be someone who doesn't know me very well. <laughs> <laughs> you sure about that? <laughs> Dave is such a mild-mannered kind of guy. I, when he told me the story, I thought he was talking about somebody else. Mm -hmm. I thought, how could that be? Well, when I was younger, um, 
I did have a little bit of a uh, an aggressive nature. Is, is that, Jen? Is that I, I would say that's that pretty way? accurate. Okay. You right. want to win, and when you're bowling bad, it's depressing, and you're you're demoralized. And it uh, it's a great game. Bowling is probably the most fantastic game in the world for a couple of reasons. You can do it for as long as you want on the replay. <laughs> Bill Pollard's been doing it as long as he wants, and this is the way he wants to do it. Head pin, center your screen to the wall. Comes off, boom, there you go. Get out of there, five pin. Bill's gotten a lot of help. <laughs> a lot of help on a couple of the shots so far. Now, Beckler says it's about time. At this point in the last match, he had knocked down three consecutive strikes. But uh, not as well this game, but nevertheless, he's in this match. Well, a factor to, a factor to consider here, Tom. In the last game, we had a right-hander against a left-hander. The shot consistency may, I want to reiterate, may have something to do with the fact that Jim is now having to make some changes on the approach to play the lanes a little differently. And uh, we will watch some of these changes as we come back after this word. Last week at Northwest Lanes, Riga Kalfa shot a 217 to edge out Mike Ackerman's score of 176 to become our current king. Lee's famous recipe would like to salute Riga Kalfa on becoming the king of bowling. Oh, Cleveland's got it all over Cincinnati. Come on, Cincinnati's got the Bengals. Cleveland's got the Browns. Cincinnati's got the best college basketball. Cleveland's in the NBA. <laughs> Cincinnati's got a fantastic riverfront. Cleveland's got an entire lake. We've got Cincinnati beer. When it comes to a little friendly competition, you can't beat the taste of Cincinnati's celebrated beers. High above the Blue Chip City, Seven Hills lies one of the West's favorite entertainment centers, Western Bowl, where in January, the Honky Classic began another year of competitive tournament bowling. Since 1975, over $1 million in prize money has been awarded each year to men and women bowlers. Additional early bird prizes are paid to winners during the first six weeks of the Hoinkie Classic, the world's largest handicap tournament. Share in the excitement. Western Bowl on Glenway Avenue, Western Hills. 13 years in the award business makes Carl's Bowlers Paddock the award professionals. Providing engraved plaques and trophies for any purpose in any size. And of course, Carl's carries a complete line of bowling supplies and accessories. Carl's Bowlers Paddock, A25-2200. Look for our new location coming soon. They're big, they're tough, and they'll blow your socks off. Get ready for the championship tractor pull. Five performances, February 10th through the 13th at Louisville's Kentucky Fair and Exposition Center. Sponsored by ICI Americas, manufacturers of agricultural products nationwide. Part of the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series. See over 200 of the nation's hottest drivers compete for over $140,000. Tickets $10 and available at Freedom Hall Box Office at all Ticketron locations. We're in the middle of a good one. Jennifer, a uh, new member of our crew today. Yeah, he's hiding it. Hey, Tom, peek around that corner. That's hey. Tom Slaughter right there. New cameraman for us here. Tom's got a birthday coming up in just a couple of weeks. Make sure to pass that along when the time comes, and the time is coming for Bill Pollard right now. Working on a double. Bill Pollard has a 17-10 advantage. A, do a double working for both players in the fourth and fifth frames. Uh, a lot of paper left. Bill Pollard, uh, incidentally, is a member of the Greater Cincinnati Bowling Hall of Fame. Very, very prestigious. How many members are roughly in that? Any idea? Uh, more than you need for a good card game. I uh, <laughs> have no idea. Yeah. It's not many, though. It's very tough to get into that. It goes back... Uh, Oh, I think back in the, to the, uh, either the early 50s or late 40s, they've been inducting people, Tommy. And it not only encompasses good bowlers, but people that have made some sort of contribution to the game in the form of uh, uh, all sports events, you know. And when I put your name on that list in three or four years, right. uh, you know, organizations, uh, leaders, and 
you know, of course, the better bowlers in town, too. There's one of them. Indeed, 56-year-old Bill Pollard. He is a bowling proprietor. He is obviously given the game and given to the game and taken some from it. He's from Versailles, Indiana. But the Hoosier has got a big load ahead of him right here. Well, once this man starts striking, we've uh, <laughs> we've been privileged to see what kind of strings he can put together. And uh, Bill is uh, Bill's about uh, nine pins in the uh, lead right now, but uh, one more strike and he's two pins down. Jim has knocked down three strikes in a row. You mentioned once he cranks it up, look out. He spared the first frame of the last game and then knocked off five consecutive strikes. And there is the triple. Well, there you have it. It's 103 to 108 in the fifth. That's five pin difference. And on the replay, we're going to see how he now takes the lead. Perfect shot. One, two pockets. Completely annihilated. Ten pins in the pit. Every pin doing its job, Tommy. He's now leading in the match. And he comes right back to answer. The seasoned veteran, if you will. Not rattled by it at all. We are qualifying today out at Fairfield Lanes, home of Bud Boskin and Kenny's Place, as they refer to it. Did you stop in there today? Yesterday? Kenny's, Kenny's, Kenny's place. place. Yeah, I think I'll stop in there and quaff a few hooties. Quaff? Well, sure, that's a, that's a quaff. Kind of word. Quaff? Oh, even if it isn't, I'll quaff them anyway. Because <laughs> they taste so good, especially well, when you're bold. Bill is quaffing down the pins, if you would, right now. <laughs> He knew he had a little pressure on him as you look at the score. Well, there you see it. It's a five-pin match. It's a five-pin match. Jim Beckler is in the lead right now with a double working. He has an opportunity to take it out and win the match. If he misses, Bill Pollard can come up and get him. Unbelievable. Bad. What a great, great shot. Solid eight pin. The right-hander, solid nine. Let's take a look at it on the replay. The ball is just going to drive too hard. Remember, the ball is supposed to take this pin out. But watch it. Jump to the right of the pin. Tough break, crucial situation. Jim Beckler has now given Bill Pollard an opportunity to win. They're holding bowling for kids' sakes uh, today, which is for Big Brothers and Big Sisters organization, and Boomer Esiason will be here from the Bengals from 12 to 5 today, bowling. He's going to be here? He's going to be here. <gasps> Come on out to Brentwood Bowl and bowl for kids' sake. I hope did, did somebody explain to Boomer that he's supposed to keep this ball on the ground, that he knows that, that I would think he does. Because, boy, if he lets one fly the other way, this place is in a lot of trouble. Look out, that big southpaw. Here's another big southpaw right here who's letting them fly. That's right, and Jim Beckler just another bad break. Back to back, eighth and ninth frame. Could have been a 7-10 swisher. Could have been a strike. As it was, it was a 10-pin and a spare. Bill Pollard can now triple to win the game. Bill Pollard, and you let see Jim Beckler. His fate lies on this roll, looking for the strike. Oh, and he grabs it. <laughs> oh, do we have a match? You bet we do. Bill Pollard on the replay. We're going to see the soft seven. The soft seven is going to get out of there. The second one from the left-hand side of your screen is the four pin. Now watch it. Oh, there you go. Get lost, seven pin. You're out of here. And one more strike puts Bill Pollard in the driver's seat. Looking good. <laughs> now, that looked to me as if he made a bit of a mistake there. But nevertheless, you see the smile, he got away with another one. A bit of a mistake. The only thing that was right with that, it was in the right bowl in the stand. <laughs> uh, it's nice to throw one that bad and get away with it. And... Uh, Bill has been throwing the ball very well. He gets a break on that one, and that basically is going to sing the swan song for Jim Beckham. Jennifer, you singing? No, I'm still not <laughs> grabbing that one. Sorry. I heard Dave before. It didn't sound too bad. Come on, Dave. Which one? Oh, Hammer? Yeah, yeah understand, yeah. folks. Jennifer's headphones weren't working that week. Okay. Right. She didn't actually hear it. Some mornings I'm better than others. You ought to hear me in the shower time. On second thought. Oh, uh, yeah. Back on to the second match, thought. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Beckler goes down to uh, defeat Bill Pollard, but I'll tell you what, 268 is first game. If he takes it out here in the 10th frame, he could finish with 221, but as it is, it's going to be tough to beat 248. Look at the smile on his face. Boy, we've had some big numbers already today in the first two games. Beckler, who you're watching right now, rolled a 268 in the first game. 
And uh, Bill comes right back in this one with an impressive 248. He knocked down last six balls in a row for strikes. I'll tell you, it's, it's tough, tough out there. You shoot 268, but what can you do for me today? The old saying. Exactly. The if old he strikes, saying. he finishes with 210, Tommy. 209. More or less indicative of the way this one went for him. So Bill Pollard will move on to face our King Riga Kalfas. We'll be back with it in just a moment. Last week during our untelevised Youth King of Bowling, Dennis Shero shot a 729 with handicap at Brentwood Lanes to become our Youth Bowler of the Week. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation, salutes Dennis Shero. Nice going, Mustang. Have one on me. Roger, Den Mother. Great. Trouble with your refreshment system? A negative. Hi, boys. Diet Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Now, there's a caffeine-free diet cola with that great Diet Pepsi taste. Introducing caffeine-free Diet Pepsi. Today's bowling tip is being brought to you by West Hills Ford. This could no more create a good golf swing than this could create a good shot on the lanes. We must maintain a good body position and a straight arm swing is essential. There are several factors you should consider. The ball must fit properly so you don't squeeze or hang at the point of release because both will cause your elbow to fly out. You must be firm at the release point, but not forceful. Your body position must be consistent. Stay down with the deep knee bend, keep the shoulders parallel at the line, and the elbow in to hit your target. So if your arm swing looks like this, work on it till it looks like this. Today's bowling tip has been brought to you by West Hills Ford. Welcome back to Brentwood Bowl, our championship match. Of course, uh, as always, I'd like to thank our fine, fine technical crew. A splendid job. Roy Alfers, our director, and his main man, top assistant, Julius Jesse Jackson. And as I mentioned last week, don't you dare confuse him with the presidential candidate. I believe. I believe. I believe in this man, too. He gave us a show last week. A couple of big games. Starts out a little early this week. Cutting through the head pin, leaving the two, four, seven. A choppable spare, but uh, he's made a few of these in his time already. What a difference in age among these two, Riga Kalfas and, of course, Bill Pollard. About 100 years, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, Bill. Jennifer, help him out. Yeah, there. no, not quite. Nowhere near. 20 and 56. All right. Riga is 20 years old. So I missed by a few. Riga looking for the spare in frame number one of our championship round. Picks it up. A little pat you know, on the back there. In a lot there. of cases, it's not a bad, uh, I mean, you don't want to try to start out with a difficult spare, but it, it doesn't hurt you when you do. You, you get your motivation, your concentration back. Yeah, yeah, I brought back a tough spare. Take that. Quite similar to a cup of coffee for us coming out in the morning to get things going. I'll tell you what, there'll be a lot of people wanting to know what Bill Pollard ate for breakfast this morning, and I'd like to know your thoughts. At home, we ask you week number one for some ideas on tips. We're going to be doing those next week, so if you have any suggestions, I'd like you to please mail your comments or suggestions in, and we want to thank you for uh, all those that we received, to the BPA office, 
Just address it tips or put my name on it, David, and we'll be glad to take a look at them as we take a look at Bill Pollard going uh, slightly high and leaving the right-handers 4-9, the lefties 6-8. Jennifer, I know you were our queen uh, the first week. How'd you do this week? Uh, well, uh, this week I'm sitting on top from Saturday, which I'm going to tell these ladies to come out and, and give it a shot. I hit a 636, which is very beatable. I think I'll even be back to see if I can't better it myself. That's this fair past deal. week from Brentwood, I believe Regina Pollard was our queen, who's very tough, and the Pollards are out in full force this morning, I see. Ricky, Ronnie, Regina, also Vicki Pollard. Trying to watch Dad they're, become they're, the king. They're very enthusiastic about their bowling and about, especially about their father, which I can relate to. Indeed. Riga Confus, though, was a determined champion one week ago and here to defend. Spared in the first. Frame number two, looking for ten. He spun that ball, Tommy. What do you he, mean by uh, that? Well, the release is supposed to take place in a very confined area at the bottom of the swing. Let's watch his replay. Now watch his hand twirl around the ball. See it right there? Mm -hmm. His thumb was pointed more down uh, at the floor than it should have been. It should be finishing in, in Fariga in the 2 o'clock area and then lifting up through the ball with his fingers. When you spin one, it's not going to hook, and even if it does, it's not going to hit. Two poor shots to open the match. Not like last week. No, not at all. Again, looking for the spare, and again, he rocks him down. I'll tell you, Riga bowls five times a week, and that's where you see all of his consistency and what he's doing. When you're bowling five times a week, you're throwing a lot of games, and your game just gets better with the more times you bowl. You know, now when I sit here and I watch some of these guys, and with all the spin and the hook they put on the ball, the first thing that comes to my mind is like a pitcher who will throw a, a, a lot of curveballs, for instance. Does the arm start to wear after a while where you can bowl actually too much? Over the years, Tommy, that's exactly what does happen. The, uh, Steve Fair, uh, one of the biggest names that our city's had in a long time, <coughs> has had to have uh, surgery on his, on his hand. Uh, I've had elbow surgery on some tendons and some uh, nerves that you have a tendency to to uh, to uh, go ahead with. Now, watch Riga. He'll go through his own little mental checklist, muttering to himself, uh, okay, which foot do I start out on here? <laughs> and then go up and throw. It's a mental game, and Bill Pollard right now is is feeling good about where he's at. Riga Kolfus is lined up now. I think we're going to see a lot more strikes. Jennifer, have you had any problem, arm problems? No, none at all. I'm 21. Well, I just turned 22 this week, so I hope I better not have. Well, happy birthday. Well, thank you. 22. Boy, I remember when I was oh, 22. Yeah, what, oh, last two year? years ago, a <laughs> year and a half or so. <laughs> I'm glad you remember it. Now, for me to remember it, that would be an accomplishment. That'd be one heck of a feat. Bill Pollard leaving the soft seven on the left flank. Thank you very much. Um, shoot this spare. Now, we've had a few people write in and say, can you teach us how to shoot spares? We'd love to do that. But for the one-minute tip that we have, we just don't have time. Um, a quick rule of thumb reference is for every two boards that you move left or right on the approach, it's equal to about the width of half of a pin, or three quarters of a pin at the end of the lane. Now this is going to change depending upon whether you throw a straight ball or whether you throw uh, a big hook. You have to get a spare game mathematically suited to your normal release time. And it's difficult to figure that out. Most of the players we see do have uh, uh, hooks to some degree. And I really don't recall right off the hand of, of a player that we've had that throws what you refer to as a straight ball. Well, Can Don, you win? Don, Don Scudder, uh, prime example of someone that throws a relatively straight ball, Tommy. Uh, and Don Scudder is just incredibly accurate. And when you throw a straight ball, that's exactly what you have to be because you don't have the advantage of the side roll and rotation. Riga, Riga has his own little uh, uh, ritual that he goes through here each and every time. For the players at home, you've got to do what's mentally comfortable for you but you also have to operate within a certain structure uh, time-wise. Riga's being young, he's going to be working on that for a long time, but when you throw a lot of strikes, it kind of helps smooth it over a little bit. 
Uh, as I said, we are qualifying today at Fairfield Lane. Um, I'd also like to say hi to Mr. Charles out there. Uh, he's, they've all been very gracious to us out there. Um, and we are qualifying, so go over and bowl a shift. Watch the footwork of Riga Kolfus. Little stutter step there at the end. What a shot. One two pocket annihilated Red Sea Red shot sea. at him. I knew it was coming, right? <laughs> Bill Pollard, who's been carrying the light shakers and breaking up some splits, has had a few things go his way. Unfortunately, we watched it last week. Not unfortunately for Riga. He's fantastic. Unfortunately for Bill. He's lined up now, Tommy. Now, Riga, you mentioned he's lined up. He's come back with three consecutive strikes. How does the match shape up then as, well, uh, at this point? What you're going to do is if Riga were to strike in the sixth frame, he's 30 pins in the lead and uh, from what we've seen of Riga once he gets a lead it's almost in, uh, impossible to catch him there you there you see it right there if Riga strikes in the sixth frame gives him 97 in the fourth to Bill Pollard's 67 30 pins plus a strike working actually makes it 40 Bill Pollard started bowling in Germany by the way at the age mm. of 22 I'm not sure I know he's from Germany but I don't know if he was born there but he did start bowling there and of course, we have a lot of German heritage right here in Cincinnati. That's right, the good beer of Hudapol, huh? I can't wait for springtime to come. I uh, I got to check with Tony and uh, make sure they're going to brew my beer again this year. Your beer? Your Bach oh, yeah, beer. My personal Bach beer. <laughs> Turn into a, um, a uh, connoisseur. Yeah, yeah, there that's right. There you connoisseur. Go. There You've you always go. been, haven't you, Dave? <laughs> of certain things. Mike Schott from Hudapol, of course, has been uh, out of town. I'd like to welcome him back. I know he and his wife That's were right. down in the, I think it was the Caribbean for a, for a short spell. And good to have them back. And Riga is really, really back on target. Well, he's just throwing 10 in the pit every shot. The Colfus train back on track. Bill Pollard, big trouble. Lanes 41 and 2, Brentwood Bowl, week number 3, and Riga Kolfus looks strong. We'd yeah. like to say hi to Shelly Moyer, too, who is Riga's, uh, he is engaged to, mm -hmm. to her. Hopefully sh he'll come back with that $750 check again this week. And Shelly, come on, take him up on this presence now. He's in the money. So you're getting him in trouble every week, Jennifer. That's you right. said that last That's week. The guy's already, I mean, look look at him. You know, he's probably a little discouraged still from that last week. And now you're already putting him right back on the spot. But he says, hey, I'll knock him down and find a way to spend it later. <laughs> That's right. And as we watch on the replay, we can, uh, we can probably see a little in his eyes the money that he thinks he's going to spend on all these presents as he rips the bottom out of this ball. Incredible. One, two. Yes. I like it. I don't want Riga to think you and I are getting him in trouble. <laughs> no I'll way. mention to him after the match what's going on back here. Bill Pollard not going to roll over, though. He's still got uh, three full frames left, working on a double from the sixth and seventh frame. Uh, he hasn't run out of paper yet. No, seventh and eighth frame, both players have filled up uh, strikes in the sixth and seventh. The eighth frame is going to be critical. Bill Pollard is 40 pins down as of right now. And I'll tell you what, there's only one way to knock down 40 sticks, and that's keep on a strike, and he cannot miss. Well, there is a miss. That's a shame. Uh, with only two frames yet to go, you come off of your string, your opponent's got 40 pins. Tommy, I'm not saying it's impossible, but at this point it's going to be extremely difficult to win, and Riga's going to have to make a couple of pretty major errors to let Bill back in this match. I'd like to send a get well wish, too, to Bud Boskin, who's in the hospital. Uh, Bud, get well. We'd like to see you next week at the show, coming to you from Fairfield Lanes. I'd like to pass those uh, same wishes along to Miss Sue Deerking, who is recovering from in the hospital. And we understand uh, doing well. Came out of intensive care a little bit earlier in the week. And hopefully she is watching our telecast today and wish you the best. She's a strong lady, I'll tell you. Hopefully. Super lady. She wouldn't miss this. She postponed an operation once to watch this show. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Hello, Sue. We might have to postpone the rest of the season the way this guy's going. Because he looks like he cannot be beat. 
Well, he comes off the strikes uh, in the same frame, the frame number eight that Bill did. But again, the, the 40 pin lead is actually grown by one. It's 41 with two frames to go. Uh, Riga Kalfas would have to open in the ninth and tenth frames for Bill Pollard to have a chance. Really enthusiastic crowd today. Dave, you mentioned the fact that we have a lot of folks, but boy, they're making some noise. They sure yeah. are. That's nice. I'll tell you, you got to have it. When the crowd's backing you, Riga's pumping, he's striking, he's winning money. It's a good day for Riga. Over his sh right shoulder there, that's Tony. He's kind of saying, what, what is with this guy? Goodness. There's Ron Bonner, too, sitting at the score table there. He was our standby. He rolled a super game, uh, lost to Don Scudder, who toughed it out in the 10, threw a double. To beat him, Ron, he'll be around. I guarantee you he'll be on this show this year. He's a super bowler. He's young. He's competitive. He wants to win. Boy, now, after, what was it, one, two, three, four, five consecutive strikes. On the replay time, we'll show you why it wasn't another consecutive. He flipped it. Watch it. See that again? He gets down at the bottom of the swing, yanks up through the shot. The thumb goes rotating too quickly. See the deflection, deflection. on the ball? It jumps to the left, and that's your four pin laying there in the gutter. When the ball deflects, your four pin's going to do nothing. That's why you got to stay underneath it and lift up through the bottom of the ball, not spin around it. Now, with the kind of groove that he got into in that stretch, why all of a sudden could he come back and, and make a, a mistake like that on his release? Well, we're talking about an, an incredibly intricate game here, Tommy. We've, we're talking that something with a one-inch variation or a millisecond difference when you start your wrist rotation will make a difference. And uh, that's what makes this game so frustrating sometimes. You might think you're, you're doing exactly what you want to do, but if you had the advantage of video, uh, you could actually see that you are making a mistake and you don't even know it. It is a very technical game. There's just so many factors that play into it. You can't believe the number of balls, the surfaces of the balls, the way the lanes are oiled, your hand position, your timing. Da -da, da -da, it's just da -da, da -da. on and on. Yeah, it's incredible, Jen. You're right. The game is over. Even if Bill were to strike out, the best he could have done was 215. <clears throat> and Riga Kaufus, without throwing a ball at all, he had 205 in the ninth frame. If he'd have hit his... He'd have had to hit his ankle twice and Bill go out, but uh, the party's over. Again, Riga Kaufus will be our king going into week number four. And I wouldn't be surprised to see more than one Pollard this year. As a matter of fact, maybe two, three, or four. They're all capable. Good crowd. Now, Bill Pollard has been impressive, very impressive, that last game, boy. He uh, finished with a 248, but... As we've said before, and as Dave and Jennifer just mentioned, the fact that Riga Kalfas right now is really on a roll. Bill doesn't want to back out of here without showing us that he's there. He wants to strike, just get it over with, go on. Maybe he'll go over and qualify again today. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Riga speeded this up a lot. Let's see if it would really bother him. Yeah, he took a little off the ball. He actually speeded up his setup and threw the ball. But he threw it slower. He's stepping right back up there again. Yeah. Let it fly, Riga. <laughs> well, there you have it. It's the king time again. And, uh, Tommy, I'll tell you what, we're going to get you out for a qualifier, I think. We'll, uh, get we'll you just out sit. Yeah. We'll I saw sit. your trophy last night. It was great. I tell you, I really enjoyed myself. <laughs> And Riga Kalfas is enjoying himself because for the second consecutive week, he is our king. We'll speak with him in just a moment when we return to Brentwood Bowl. Last week during our untelevised Queen of Bowling, Regina Snodgrass shot a 646 at Brentwood Lanes to become this week's top woman qualifier. And Lee's famous recipe would like to salute Regina Snodgrass. Lee's famous recipe makes the best tasting chicken in town. We bake fluffy scratch buttermilk biscuits glazed with melted butter. Taste our country fresh salads and hot vegetables. Right now, you can get the 12-piece family feast with all the fixins for only $9.95. A complete wholesome meal for only $9.95. 
famous recipes family feast. The great taste keeps you coming back. Want to go bowling? I'd be delighted. <laughs> That's right. Six months park rent absolutely free with any new home purchased from America's Choice before March 1st. America's Choice. America's Choice. Mobile homes. We're America's Choice. We're America's Choice. Make your choice America's Choice. Let the motors roar. Sports Promotions presents the third annual National Championship Arena Cross. Saturday and Sunday, February 13th and 14th in Cincinnati Garden. Motorcycle Quad. Plus a monster truck car crush. You'll see the top arena cross riders from all over the country. Plus a team race. Each show between Kentucky and Ohio. Then, then along comes Barefoot. See this awesome giant monster truck doing some serious car crushing. Cincinnati, get ready. The third annual National Championship Arena Cross. Coming, coming. Welcome back to Brentwood Bowl. Got everybody up here. And Dave, you've got a little bit of cash for everyone as well, don't you? That's right, Tommy. In the first match, uh, Don Scudder, $150. Don, you bowled well, but uh, not to be today. Congratulations. Jim, you've been, had the hot hand so far this year. Not quite hot enough today, though. But another $225 to go into the kitty. And Bill Pollard, uh, well, you said, Bill, you didn't quite play him right, but 375 will soothe the hurt a little bit. Congratulations. Tommy? Well, for the second week in a row, we're standing here with our king, of course, Riga Kalfas. And Riga, 750 bucks for you. Now, we mentioned Jennifer's going to get you in trouble. She's telling about your fiancé. She's not going to spend that, is she? No, 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 no. We got bills to pay and all that kind of stuff. All right, let me ask you about the match a little bit. It looked like after the first two frames, you started to find your line as we take a look at it. Well, and I was practicing down on the warm-up pair, and when I came down, I came down late, and I only got to throw two balls on the TV pair. And I really wasn't quite lined up, and then uh, I just found the line. What's it been like for you? I mean, these last couple of weeks, it looks like you're almost unbeatable at this point. Oh, uh, it's been hectic. I've been real nervous, but I've, I've usually bowled good under pressure, so hopefully I'll keep being nervous. And you'd like to keep bringing back that 750. Uh, that'd be nice. And Shelly could get something. <laughs> you better believe it. Well, good luck to you. Of course, also again next week, speaking of big bucks, We've got our 14K Golden Ball Contest. No one won today, so that means $300 goes into the pot next week. If you would like to get involved, again, here's the address of BPA Golden Ball Contest, 1821 Summit Road, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45237. David, of course, will be back again next week, and I believe we're in Fairfield, and you're doing a little qualifying today. Well, we're going to run up the pike and see if we can knock down a few pins. Fairfield Lanes is a place of the action, and that's where we're going to see you next week, Tommy. Hopefully see you. We'll, hopefully we'll see you rolling. <laughs> That'd be nice. For Jennifer Kleekamp, David Newrath, I'm Tom Brenneman saying so long, everybody, from Brentwood Bowl. Cincinnati BPA's Cutipole King of Bowling. Brought to you by Hewdy Delight, Cincinnati's own light beer and an official beer sponsor of the Greater Cincinnati Bicentennial.